easiest of all. And B is 0, no? B is 0, entirely equal goes to 0. Understood? B is 0 itself, integral is gone. Magnified is not present. Okay? Case number 2, you decide something. Theta is? So, cos of 1. Theta is 90. Is it first I will see when it will become 0? Vanish. So when theta is 90 or b is 0, integral goes to 0. Easiest of all. Right? Next. Case 3. If b is constant and theta is also constant, like she said, theta can be 0. Okay? Which is a constant. Okay, if B is constant, my hinted of B is constant and theta is constant, what will happen to this integral? B and cos theta will come out of the integral. So it will become B into cos theta integral dl. Integral dl over the loop is what? It's perimeter. Yes or no? So this entire thing becomes B into cos theta into perimeter. You can say P is the perimeter. Okay. If you take the loop to be circle, P is 2 pi r. Okay. Usually the theta which is constant is 0. Usually. Then cos theta becomes 1. It should be just P into perimeter. Left hand side. Usually theta is 0. So cos theta becomes 1. Understood? So if, if you want to apply Ampere's theoretical law, you must be on a lookout of these three cases. Otherwise you will not be able to integrate this. Get it? And the best part is it is on your hands to choose whatever shape and size of the loop you want to use. So what you will do? You will first look at the magnetic field, how it is, and then draw your loop in such a way that one of these three cases happens. Getting it? Understood? Now, one more thing you must notice that this entire integral can be split into this integral can be split, can be split into multiple parts. This integral you can say that I will split the entire uh, loop into two three segments. Just like in DOS theorem, we used to integrate over surface 1, then surface 2, then surface 3, like that. Right? Even in the loop, we can split the loop into multiple segments. P dot dl, then second part of the segment, P dot dl, plus third part of the segment, P dot dl. Like this, you can integrate. But then, when you integrate, you have to make sure you have integrated through the entire loop. Okay? And when you split, any of these three can be any of these three cases. Maybe the first integral is case number one, second integral is case number two, third integral is case number three. So that is why you split. May not be that all these three cases exist for entire loop. I mean, it's not that only single case is there for entire loop. That's why you split so that you can deal with it differently. Get it? So this is Ampere's circuital law. Any doubt? No doubt? Huh. Say it, na? What? Why do I construct a loop? See, the derivation of this particular Ampere's circuital law, how this comes, you are effectively asking why this is true. Okay? This derivation is not in our curriculum. In fact, I have never bothered to look into the derivation of this. Understood? So we have started with this fact that this is true. Okay? So if you ask me why this is true, I have not looked into how this has come. Why it is a loop. Understood? Okay? And even if I look into it, probably you have not done those mathematical courses, you will not be able to understand. Even if I look and tell you how it is derived. There will be triple integrals and all those things that will come up, you might have never seen them. Okay? So let's start from here. Let's assume this is true. It is like asking why Coulomb's law 
was true. Why it is k into q1 q2 by r square? It is asking why from where gravitational force comes. Okay, those fundamental questions they do come, but at times nobody has an answer to them. It is just you know it, the, you know how Gauss theorem was uh, formulated. Gauss was a scientist who was who did not uh, he was not a scientist by you know by birth. He was not doing lot of experiments and then found out the Gauss theorem. He was playing football somewhere and then something clicked in his mind and then he thought that like, it should be true. So from there on he formulated something and it happens to be true. Okay. So he did not found the exceptions which are not true. Whatever he has found. So it is like that. All right. Next is application of anti circuital law. Right now, application of anti circuital law. Right now. For. Magnetic field, see when you apply anti-circuital law, you are finding magnetic field on the loop itself. You are integrating P dot DL. On the loop you are integrating. On the loop what is P, on the loop where is DL and then on the loop you are finding. Understood? So first we will take right now first application of anti-circuital law. First let us take an infinite wire. Infinite wire having current type. Tell me what kind of. See, before we apply anti circuit law, we should know the Dyson magnetic field. Yes or no? So, first let us discuss how the magnetic field line should be because of this current. How it will be? It will be circular inside here, outside there. Circle, concentric circles. Right? And Will the magnetic field be magnitude of that will be constant throughout the circle or not? If you take a circle of radius r, if you draw a circle throughout the circle, the strength of magnetic field will be constant or not? It will be due to symmetry. This point is no different from this point in terms of magnitude of the magnetic field. Same distance there. Understood? Okay. So you have to apply the anti circle law over here and find out the magnetic field. At a distance z away from the wire. So what do you do? You draw an ambiguous loop, which is what? What shape? Why circle? Then you get case number three. Magnetic field is constant and angle theta is zero, which is again a constant. Yes or no? Try to apply that and get the answer. This is your ambiguous loop at a distance z. The angle between B and DL is 0. So B dot DL simply becomes D into DL. And B is constant, B comes out of the integral. So this will become that. The integral of DL over the loop is 2 by Z. This should be equal to mu naught into what is the current passing through the loop? I. So magnetic field is mu naught I by 2 by Z. This is what you got by integrating. This or not? Any doubts? Let's take a new angle on whatever you are doing just now. No doubt, right? I'll, I'll write down two questions. Solve both of them and then we end the class. You have, I'll just, uh, what? You have a solid cylinder. Draw the solid cylinder like this, which is infinite. This solid cylinder is infinite. The radius of the solid cylinder is R. Total current I is distributed on the area of the solid cylinder and the current is going like this. It is distributed over the area. Okay? You have to find magnetic field 
Okay, so the left hand side will be V to 2 pi R only, right? This is the mu to current that is passing through. Now current passing through is how much? It is thick. It completely encloses the inner cylinder. So which is I minus whatever is the current enclosed over there. How much is that? Current per unit area which is I into B square minus A square into pi into R square minus A square. So this is the current, this one. When you substitute it over here, you will get the value of P. All of you understood this? Does it make sense? See, things are straightforward. You are making it complicated in your head. It is so straightforward, you just have to find out how 